Hello everyone and welcome to another video on JavaScript programming. Kaushal this side from Simply Code and today we are going to discuss constructors in JavaScript. Basically we are going to discuss two more methods of creating an object and in these two methods we will be using constructors. So before we begin make sure that you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss an update on programming videos. So without any further delay let's get started. In the previous videos, we discussed the object literal method of creating an object, right? We discussed the advantages of using that method. This is the program we made in the previous video. So here we use the object literal method of creating an object. We created an object for rectangle and this object will print the area and parameter of a rectangle, right? So today we will be discussing two other ways of creating an object. So in JavaScript, we can use constructor in two different ways. We will be discussing both of them. The first one we will discuss is the object constructor method and the other way of doing so is by using the constructor function. We have already discussed the constructor function in the previous video wherein we took the example of a car. But we will go through it once again so that there will be no confusion between all the methods of creating an object in JavaScript. So let's move ahead and we will go through the object constructor method now. So the syntax for creating an empty object using the object constructor method goes like this. We'll write the where keyword followed by the object name. Then we have the equals to sign and the equals to sign is followed by the new keyword and object with a capital O. So this is the syntax of creating an empty object by using the object constructor method. So you guys have to remember this syntax and it will remain the same every time we use the object constructor method. So this object here, so this object is the constructor. What this will do is it will create an instance for this object and assign it to the object name. So whatever object we are creating here, it will assign it to this object through which we can write and access other properties of the object. So let's move on and we'll create an object first. Let's say we are creating the same program we did in the previous tutorial wherein we printed the area and the parameter of a rectangle. So we'll use the same program so that there will be no confusion. Let's move ahead and create an empty object now. So the syntax will be like, we'll write the object name as, let's say rec2. And then we have the new keyword along with the object and opening and closing round brackets. So this is our empty object. So this statement is the same as like if you remember in the last video when we created an object using the object literal method. So we created it like we wrote where keyword along with the object name and then we have a pair of curly braces. So both these statements are same. What we did is we created an empty object in both the cases. So after creating an empty object, the next thing we'll do is we'll add properties and behaviors to that object. So let's move on and we'll add two properties which are length and the width of a rectangle and then we'll add methods as well. So how to add properties to an object? We'll write here the object name dot property name. So the object name here is rec2 and the property name will be length equals to the value of length will be let's say 5 and the second property we have is the width and we'll write here rec2 dot width and the value for this will be let's say 10. So we are done with the properties here. Next up we'll add the methods as well. So let's add the two methods as well in this object. Our two methods are the get area and the get parameter method. The syntax for adding methods to an object goes like this. We are adding a method get area, right? So we'll write here the object name dot method name. So let's say our method name is get area followed by an equals to sign and we'll write here function and then the body of the method. So this get area method will return the area of a rectangle, right? So we'll use this keyword again as we did in the last video. By now, I hope you guys are aware of this keyword. So we'll write here return this dot length into this dot width. So this method will return the area of a rectangle. Next up, we have another method which is we'll write here rec2 dot get parameter 
for printing the parameter of a rectangle. So we'll again write here function and then we have the body of the function. So this method will return the parameter. So the parameter of rectangle goes like 2 into length plus 2 into width. So here we are done with the object. Next up, we'll print these values on the browser. So we'll use the same code for printing which we used in the previous video. So we'll copy it from here and we'll paste it here. So what we have to change here is we have to change the name of our object. So we'll write here rect2 in place of rect1 and we are good to go. Let's save this. So here you can see we have made a mistake here. So you can see that it is not printing the parameter of a rectangle, right? So the mistake here is we forgot to mention the this keyword here. So we'll write here this dot length and this dot width. So let's save this now and see we have the length, width, area and parameter of the rectangle. So the area is 10 into 5 which is 50 and the parameter is 2 into 10 plus 2 into 5. So 20 plus 10 equals to 30. So we have the parameter here as well. And if you guys remember we had the same output in the previous video as well. So the difference between the object constructor method and the object literal method is almost negligible, right? The main difference is at the initial part of the code. So the main difference lies here. The syntax is a bit different. In the object literal method we used curly braces and in the object constructor method we use the parenthesis. Of course there are some more minor differences but the code looks almost the same in the end. So the advantage of the literal object method over the object constructor method is it is easy to use syntax wise. Also it executes faster than this method because we define all the properties and methods at a single place while defining the object right. So this is the difference between the object literal method and the object constructor method. So we'll comment this program now and let's move ahead and discuss another way of creating an object which is the constructor function method. This way of creating an object is a bit different from the other two ways which we discussed till now. It is used when we work with multiple instances of an object. It works like we have a template and we can access that template using multiple objects. So if we want to make more than one object and we don't want to write the code again and again for each object. We can use this method when we have more than one object. If you guys remember like in the previous video where we took the example of a car, we created an object car and then we created multiple instances wherein we use those instances for different car manufacturers. Let's take a look at this method first and then we'll discuss the advantages of using this method as well. So as the name suggests, the method starts with function and then we'll write the name of the function. Let's say we have rec and then inside the opening and closing round brackets, we'll pass the properties as parameters. So let's take a look. We'll write here length, comma, width. So we have these two properties only and then we have the body of the function. So inside the functions body, we'll write the properties and we'll use this keyword here. What we'll do is we'll use this dot property name equals to property name. So we'll write here this dot length equals to length. So this is the syntax for adding any property to a function. What we just did is whenever we are going to create an object using this constructor function method, we'll pass certain values will pass the length and the width, right? So all these values will be present at the RHS. So all these values will be present here and this dot length will be the actual property of the object. So let's move ahead and add the second property as well. We'll write here this dot width equals to width. So we had two methods as well, right? Let's add them here inside the constructor function. We'll use this keyword again. We'll write here this dot get area and we'll write here function with opening and closing round brackets and the body of the function. So this method will again return the area of a rectangle. 
so we'll write here return length into width so there's a difference in these two methods so here we use the this keyword here and in the previous method we used the this keyword inside the method right so there's a difference in these two methods so now what we'll do we'll add another method so the next method is this dot get parameter and the syntax will be the same we'll write here function then the body of the function so we'll write return two into length plus two into width so here we are done with the constructor function now all we have to do is we have to create an object and we'll pass the parameters as well so let's say we are creating an object here for that we have to write here where and the object name so let's say the object name is r1 and after the equals to we have to write the new keyword and the name of the function so we'll write here rec3 and we'll pass the parameters so let's say the parameters are 5 and 10 because we use these parameters in other two videos as well so we'll write here 5 and 10 let's suppose we want to print the area and parameter so here we are done with the printing part so what we are printing is we are printing the area of the rectangle and the parameter of the rectangle so we have called these two methods using the object name so we have written here r1.getArea and r1.getParameter similarly if we want to print the length and width we can do that as well so what we have to do is we have to write document dot write and let's say we are printing them simply we will write here r1 dot length and then we will copy this we will write here width so here we are done with the total process and now we will save this program and see we have the values here the value of length is 5 because we have passed the parameter as 5 and then we have the value of width which is 10 and this is also because of the parameter then we have the area of rectangle which is 10 into 5 so it is 50 and then we have the parameter as 30 so the advantage of using this method is we can create more objects if we want to add one more object here let's say we are using where r2 and we want to print let's say the parameters are different here let's say we are giving as 4 and 10 or let's say we are giving in 4 and 8 so what we have to do is we have to copy all this and we have to change the value here as instead of r1 we'll use r2 here again we'll use r2 and then we have to update the value of r2 here and we are good to go now so let's save this program and see we have the values for other object as well so here we have 4 as length and then we have 8 as width and the area is 8 into 4 which is 32 and the parameter is 2 into 8 which is 16 and 2 into 4 which is 8 so 16 plus 8 is 24 so i hope you guys got this i hope you guys understood the advantages of using the constructor function so the main advantage is that only that we can create more than one object by using this method so that's all for this video guys see you in the next one where we will go through the object prototype in javascript if you like this video do give it a thumbs up if you have any doubts do let us know in the comments below share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe simply code thank you